Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembrick. I'm Janice. This is Quick Study Television, a television program designed to take you through the Bible in one year. We are doing that. We're in the words of the prophet, and it's fascinating. I'll tell you what, one person that helps us do this is Corey. Corey, what's up today? Today, we are going to be exploring some of the wrath of God as articulated in Ezekiel. Thank you. And then Ryan is here to help us figure out what in the world's going on. Ryan, what's happening? Today, I'm looking at an apparent error regarding one of the prophecies in Ezekiel 26, the destruction of the ancient city of Tyre. All right, very good. What are you doing, Janice? Well, today we're studying Ezekiel, and we're going to talk about the difference between irresponsible shepherds and the one true good shepherd. Fascinating. Today, in the teaching segment, we're going to be talking about this. Shepherds fed themselves, but not the lambs of God. What in the world is going on? We'll find out. God talks to the shepherds and says, no, I'm going to come and replace you. So get your Bible guide out. Get your Bible out. It's time to study as we go through the words of the prophet Ezekiel. It is time to study. the reading that you'll find in our Bible guide uh, in this book of Ezekiel today. Ezekiel speaks about, once again, this nation of Edom and God's wrath against it, and he explains a lot of things. So let's take a look at this nation. The first mention of Edom in the Bible is found in Genesis chapter 36, which contains the family history of Esau. As Esau and his brother Jacob grew their households and business interests, Esau moved away to allow more growth for the both of them. Esau traveled to the land of Seir and mixed with some of the people living there, and the nation of Edom was born. Unfortunately, the continued history of Edom and Israel was not peaceful. Crossing paths again generations later, recorded in Numbers chapter 20, the newly emancipated nation of Israel asked for passage through the land of Edom, but Edom rejected their request and added on a threat of warfare. The hostility lasted. Both King Saul and King David of Israel are said to have waged war against the Edomites. And there are mentions of Edom in several of the Old Testament books of the prophets. Outside of the Bible, there is now plenty of evidence that not only establishes Edomite culture, but also illuminates their hostility towards and continued warfare against Judah. Even from the archaeology of Judah itself, this hostility has been found. From excavations of the Judean military outpost of Arad, a Hebrew ostracon, or writing on pottery, has been found from the late 7th century BC. It's a message that urges more Judean troops be sent to protect settlements against Edom. A comparable Edomite ostracon has also been found. It records information about grain, but the point of importance is that it was found in a captured Judean fortress, evidence of Edom's invasion. This hostility makes sense given the time. Assyria had destroyed northern Israel, and the ever-growing threat of Babylon was priority one for the kingdom of Judah. Judah was distracted, and her enemies made good use of it. This also helps to explain another feature of the land. Around this time, many new Judean military outposts were built. It appears that this was a response to an aggressive Edom. 
Now, you may have noticed by now through reading through a few of these books of these ancient prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and now here we are in Ezekiel. And while the content is different, there is a very consistent thread throughout all of the judgment prophecies, isn't there? Uh, specifically, I, I don't want to look at the nations as we just took a look at the nation of Edom, who was actually related to ancient Israel and Judah, but looking more specifically at ancient Judah, because at this time period in Ezekiel's life, that is the only nation that is remaining of uh, the original 12 tribes of Israel. The, the 10 tribes represented by northern Israel, uh, also called Ephraim, have already fallen to the nation of Assyria. So when you go back and you read uh, the prophet Isaiah, there are uh, indictments, judgments against ancient Israel because she stepped away from the covenant that she willingly entered into with God. And now here we are once again in, in Jeremiah and Ezekiel, when taking a look at this ancient nation of Judah, where this indictment is the same. And when you specifically look at Ezekiel chapter 36, I believe it's verse 18. God brings an indictment against Judah because of the blood that they had shed on the land uh, and the defilement with idols that they had brought into the nation. God was bringing judgment upon this nation. Shepherds that lead their flocks into danger do not feed them correctly or they don't take care of their lambs and they are fallible shepherds. They are people who lead their sheep into false doctrines and bad belief systems. Well, that's what God called the shepherds of Israel. The prophet Ezekiel tells the truth about God's word. There are horrible shepherds who lead people into bad belief about systems of God. Now this passage of the prophet explains that God will come and lead his sheep into right paths again. They will know God and what is right and what is wrong. He will make sure that they are not taken advantage of. Today there are many bad shepherds still. There are many good shepherds. A good shepherd sees Jesus Christ as Lord of the church and leads the people after him. Ezekiel 34, verses 1 through 13. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves! Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, Surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, 
and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may no longer be food for them. For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys, and in all the inhabited places of the country. Ezekiel 34, verses 1 through 13. You know, the words of Ezekiel are absolutely stunning. And Janice has done a fabulous job at reading this passage. It is absolutely amazing. And I want to tell you something, that he speaks of the shepherds today. This is amazing because that really is the priest. And today could be the pastors. And let me tell you something, there are many shepherds that are bad today. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, first, I want to mention that you can get your Bible guide. If you don't have yours, why not write to the U.S. address or the Canadian address? We'll be happy to send it to you for an offering in any amount to help us con continue on here and carry on and keep the lights lit and the cameras going. Write to the U.S. or the Canadian address. And also remember, you can get it at www.biblediscoverytv.com, biblediscoverytv.com. I was looking at this and I thought, you know, this is interesting because there really is only one thing to put in the steps of faith here as we titled this, and that is the shepherd's failure. The failure of the people who are to lead God's individuals who love God and are looking for God, well, the shepherds are shepherding the people, but in the wrong direction and the wrong way, taking advantage of them. We read from Ezekiel 34 to 36, and this is an amazing passage because Ezekiel is in the river Kibar. Now this is in the shadow of the gigantic city of Babylon. And we read from chapter 34, 1 through 13, as we consider the scripture, what God says, let's think about the shepherds. This is Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 1 through 5. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God to the shepherds. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves, who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool? You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost, but you with force and cruelty have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Now this is an amazing uh, alliteration here of what God is saying. The shepherds fed themselves, but not the lambs of God. This is interesting. We must never be selfish. We must be selfless. And this is something that I need to say. Because on this program, I need to tell you that I am not paid more than the average person. But many preachers on TV and many people on TV are paid large amounts of money. I am not. My wife is not. We are paid regularly, just like a normal person. When we do get paid, sometimes pay is delayed because there's not enough money that comes in. And that's the absolute truth. Because we are not in this for anything except to teach you the Word of God. But the shepherds in Israel, they were taking the food all themselves, taking up all the offerings themselves. God was offended. We go on to the scripture. My sheep wandered through all of the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered to the whole face of the earth and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord as I live, says the Lord. Surely, because my flock became a prey, 
and my flock became food for every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the words of the Lord, the prophet says. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouths that they may no longer be food for them. Beloved, here is what we need to say. God will deliver his sheep. We must follow Jesus Christ, letting God lead. I like to say this, uh, very important as we think about this today. This is in the time of the exile. And this is uh, really important, about 586 B.C. That's a really important time. But today we can take that to heart. God is the head of the church. There's no man. The Pope is not the head of the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. That's very important. Very important for us to understand. We go on and we see in verse 11, it says, For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day, he is among his scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and a dark day. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys and in all the inhabited places of the country. God promises he'll do this. God provided Israel for his people, beloved. Gentiles who give their heart to Jesus Christ are the 13th tribe of Israel. God made a way for all of us. That's a, a funny saying, but it's true. I believe that there is a 13th tribe of Israel, and that is the Gentiles, those who love the Lord, those who give their self to Jesus Christ and work indeed to make sure that people understand that Jesus Christ gave himself because this earth is full of sin and there's a lot of problems on the earth. There's no problem on the earth that, that can be solved by earthly things, but it must be solved by a spiritual answer. And that spiritual answer is Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You and I spoke a little bit earlier today about how Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 18 brings an indictment against Judah uh, from God that they had participated in idol worship and completely ignored and broken the covenant that they made with God. Let's take a look at how. Many of the biblical prophets denounced ancient Israel and Judah for their degradation of true worship either an all-out rejection of the command to worship only God, or a perverse intermingling of the worship of God with the practices of other nations. A common evaluation of a king in the biblical books of Kings and Chronicles was whether or not the king's heart was fully devoted to God. One of the key demonstrations of this was if the king took down the high places in the land. Most did not. Not much explanation is given about these high places other than that they were places of worship, sanctuaries and complexes used during the time of the kings for deviant worship. The first example of a king of Israel building high places is King Solomon, whom we are told built high places to the gods of the Moabites and Ammonites on a hill across from Jerusalem. Following his lead, the new king of the north, Jeroboam, built two shrine cities, Bethel and Dan, for northern Israel. The ancient cultic city of Dan today has been excavated, and its royal high place seems to be a good example of these ancient Israelite high places. The idols were long gone, but what did remain for archaeologists to find was a huge open-air platform, 60 feet across an ancient high place complete with bone fragments from sacrifices, altars, cultic utensils, and standing stones or sacred pillars. 
Through the evaluation and study of the kinds and types of animal bones found at Dan, it appears as though at this city, the deviant Israelites still stuck to a priestly code somewhat in line with Israelite laws for sacrificing found in the Torah. This suggests that they were trying to mix their cultural identity while worshipping whatever and however they wanted. Both this kind of pseudo-priestly worship, as well as all-out pagan worship, are both mentioned in the Bible, and now are evidenced in history. One of the most challenging and interesting Old Testament books is that of the prophet Daniel. Containing narrative history as well as predictive prophecy, Daniel takes us through the time of the Babylonian captivity through to the days of Cyrus, king of Persia. To help understand the book of Daniel, our on-air team have put together an hour-long presentation. In the first section, you'll hear teachings from both Rod and Corey as they investigate the history of this prophet and many of the predictive prophecies and visions he records. During the last half of the presentation, you'll join in a whole team discussion about the issues and implications unveiled in Daniel. So if you've ever wondered about the history of Daniel, or about his visions and prophecies, which have been fulfilled and which are still to come, then we encourage you to contact us and get a hold of your copy of this DVD. For a suggested donation of $25 or more, we'd be thrilled to send you Quick Study Unplugged, Daniel. Thank you for staying with us and joining us as we continue to go through the Bible, the words of Ezekiel. It's very interesting. Next time on Quick Study Television, we are going to talk about it. We're going to talk about this. God is the only one, the only one who can cause dead things to live again. That's right. God can cause them. He prophesies to them. It's very interesting. And we'll talk about the dry bones next time on Quick Study Television. Ryan, did God really say... Well, today our alleged Bible error comes from a prophecy recorded in Ezekiel chapter 26. And actually, skeptics make a number of allegations against this particular prophecy. Here the prophet proclaims that the ancient city of Tyre would be destroyed and never rise again. However, when we look at a map of the Middle East, we do see a city called Tyre. Skeptics claim that the Bible cannot truly be the Word of God because it contains many mistakes and contradictions. One of the most famous of these alleged mistakes is found in the prophecy of Ezekiel 26. Here the prophet proclaims that the city of Tyre would be utterly destroyed, never to rise again. The ancient city of Tyre was enormously powerful, proud, and rich. It was the equivalent of New York City in its day. While critics make many allegations against this particular prophecy, they especially like to point to the fact that the city of Tyre can be found on any modern map of the Middle East. However, as Dr. Grant Jeffrey pointed out, the modern city of Tyre is not the rebuilt city of ancient Tyre, since the ancient city was located many miles away. This, says Jeffrey, would be the equivalent of the destruction of New York City and the development of a new city built centuries later, many miles to the north, which took the ancient name to honor the memory. Indeed, the actual city of Tyre was destroyed just like Ezekiel predicted. It began with King Nebuchadnezzar II defeating mainland Tyre in a 13-year siege from 585 to 573 BC, and then in 332 BC, Alexander the Great reduced the island city of Tyre to utter ruins. Some assume that Ezekiel 26 is speaking only of Nebuchadnezzar's campaign, and therefore, since he did not fulfill all the prophecies, this must be a contradiction. However, Ezekiel 26 clearly states in verse 3 that many nations would come up against Tyre. Additionally, verses 7 through 11 specify that Nebuchadnezzar will capture, plunder, and thoroughly destroy the parent city on the shore. But in verse 12, there seems to be a change, as the previously used singular pronoun he is now the plural pronoun they. Interestingly, the two verses following sound remarkably like Alexander's campaign. 
The fact is, the ancient city of Tyre was utterly destroyed and has never since risen, just as the Bible predicted. It's clear to see that there's absolutely no mistake. The ancient city of Tyre was destroyed over a period of many years, never to rise again. Nebuchadnezzar took out the mainland city and Alexander the Great took out the island city. And the text in the Bible even seems to make that very distinction. This is a good example of what is called a double reference, where a Bible passage is speaking of two different people or events that are separated by a long period of time. Interestingly, we see these double references all throughout the Bible. That is interesting. Double references. Fascinating stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good, Ryan. Thank you. And we'll watch next time. Now, what's going on? Yes. Well, we are in Ezekiel chapter 34, and that chapter is entirely dedicated to God speaking to the irresponsible shepherds of his people. And then he talks about himself and how that he is the true good shepherd of his people. And I love how verse 11 begins that, for thus says the Lord God, indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. And then it goes down later and it just really reveals the heart of God and his love for his people. And um, I just wanted, if you have a pen and a piece of paper, I will give you some scripture references that you can look at the way that God references himself throughout his word as the good shepherd. Of course, Psalm 23 is the most obvious and most of us have learned that uh, by heart. And it's an excellent uh, Psalm. If you've never read it before, please do that. Psalm 23, Isaiah 40 verse 11. It's God speaking. Jeremiah 23 verse 3, Jeremiah 31 verse 10, Micah chapter 2 verse 12 and also Micah chapter 4 verses 6 through 8. Each one of those are a really good um, reference as God is talking about himself as the one true shepherd. I hope Jesus is in your heart that he may be your shepherd through life. It is critical to see the rise of Israel as part of the end of days in the land. We must see that God is doing something very special and unique. We share space with Israel. The first time the church has shared space with that nation since AD 70 to 74. Israel is 68 years old in 2016, the time of life we begin to see the Lord move in the world. It is not surprising that many nations turn against her. But remember, God will bless those who bless her and curse those who curse her. Jesus Christ is real, and he is a person who came 2,000 years ago, died on a cross, and rose again miraculously. You know, it's interesting that they use his name as a swear word today, but he is anything but that. He's alive. He ascended to heaven. And the Holy Spirit has come so that when we pray and we ask God, Lord, come into my life, the Holy Spirit does that. Pray and accept Jesus today and gain eternal life. <music>